Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to repair this broken side mirror. Now unfortunately this has smashed here, this is actually aluminium. You need to use aluminium welding to put this back on. Now the problem is these side mirrors are not made to handle an impact in this direction. Yes, they can handle an impact like that, but in this direction it actually just snaps off here and you probably need to get a new mirror. So I'm going to do a workaround and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a type of epoxy and build this up. You can only do this if you've got enough space and I'm going to go through this step by step. Now this is an E65 BMW so what I do to get this to get some space here is I need to take this glass off. Now it's different on different cars. Some I mean, you need to put a screwdriver there and loosen a spring. Some you have to loosen a wire. In this case I just clip it out like that and then remove the mirror. Now a lot of the time you'll find wires here so don't just pull it out roughly and in this case I can see there I've unplugged the heater wires for the mirror and now I can just flip that to the side and over here I do see there's some screws. I've already removed some screws so I've just got two left. Now that allows me to get to the aluminium frame. Now the next step is to just put something here we don't want to damage the car right so now i've just put that there so that the frame does not damage the car now i'm going to use an epoxy to fix this so the first thing i need to do is remove any of the paint i've already started removing the paint the reason being is that epoxy likes to bond to a rough surface and this is a gloss surface so i'm going to now sand this paint away using a very coarse sandpaper so this is a 40 grit sandpaper and i'm just going to sand around here and you can also use a file. Right, now on this side, I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to take away the excess paint here. Right, now I just take a blower. Now I clean this with 90% alcohol or lacquer thinners. Just do not spill any thinners on the car because it will remove the paintwork. Now because there's sometimes oil on fingers, I just clean my fingertips with the lacquer thinners as well or the rubbing alcohol. Right, so I'm going to mate that back on that. I'm just buffing these surfaces to make them rough. And the first step I'm going to do is just use super glue. I'm going to put super glue on all the tears. So it'll be there, there, there. I'm going to make sure that no super glue goes in there. Otherwise, it won't turn nicely. And I'm showing you I've removed most of the paintwork and I've also roughened it up. These scratches or gouges are actually helpful for the epoxy. It's going to be a bond onto the aluminium, but also a mechanical bond because I'm going to put the epoxy in such a way that it acts as a clamp. Right, I'm just checking that it will seal nicely, there's nothing in the way, and also I'm just checking that it does move. There you go, it will move perfectly well. So all I need to do is do a preliminary stick. I'm going to put super glue all around the cracks and then it will stay in place. Then I will start with the epoxy. Right, so if I flip this up, that's where I'm going to glue along this line. I'm going to glue all along that line and to the other side. The sticky putty does come in handy and I will use it shortly. So the first step is just to put super glue all over the section that has the tear. These are the mating surfaces. Right, now I can seat this. And very important to make sure it's flush there and there. Right, now this is where I'm using the sticky putty. I'm just putting some just over here. And now what I'm doing is I'm using these filings. This is a product called Cubon. There's lots of different ones that do the same thing. And I'm just pouring a few of the filings, just some filings in there to build it up and to get it to dry quite quickly. Now I just put some super glue on those filings.
Right, so I'm just going to put some putty over here so that the glue does not run over here. Now this plastic bushing actually moves so all I need to make sure is that the super glue does not get between the, the plastic and the shaft. If it touches the plastic it's fine but if it goes between the plastic and the shaft then it's going to be a problem. Putting this putty here, press stick, whatever you want to call it and now I can put some super glue here. Now just remove the putty and just put a little bit more of the super glue here. Right, this is dry over here so I can just remove this putty. Right, now the super glue and the filings is doing a great job because right now you can see that it is already fastened on. But obviously this is brittle so if I smack it here it'll just break off. So what I'm going to do now is use the epoxy now. So what I want to do is just check when I put the cover on if the cover is going to block anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cover on and see where I've got space to work. So in this case when I realign the cover I see I've got lots of space here to put epoxy. It's not going to interfere with the closing of this cover. And just checking the other side, yes there's lots of space here so I can build up this section quite a lot. All right, I'm just going to be using the Gorilla Epoxy. There's lots of different epoxies. I'm just going to be using this one. Whichever epoxy you use, try and use one that dries a little bit flexible. If you use one that dries rigidly, it will be brittle and one knock and it will just crack. So I use about half. And now what I'm going to do is just paint it on. So now I'm just painting it on. And the purpose is just to put as much as I can around the whole fitting because this is going to be the first layer. Now over here a little bit of the epoxy is seeping towards the plastic. I'm just scraping it away. It's very little so it's not going to stop it from turning. Now I'm just making sure that no epoxy is dripping over the moving part. So I've basically just glazed the entire section with epoxy. Right, now I'm going to leave that to dry for a few hours. Right, I've left this overnight and uh, straight away I can see that it is pretty strong. I mean even if I bump it, as you can see, it is now holding in place very nicely. So what I'm going to do now is just put a second coat here and then I'll close this up. Now I'm going to be building this up a bit more, especially on the line of the brake. Now the brake line is sitting there, there and then it goes like that. So I can build it up over here. I can also build it up a bit more over here and there's a lot of space over here to build it up. If I put almost a clump of epoxy here, it'll offer quite a lot of support because it'll be thicker. But I need to be aware that the cover still needs to go over this and close. Now there's also some space to build some up at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is just put the cover on and see how much space there is. Right, so just having a look at the clearance here, there's still a lot of space here and that's where the crack line is. So I can build this up quite a lot with some epoxy. But what I need to do is just check that the other cover will also fit over that higher surface of the epoxy. Now in this case, there's little plastic fingers that feed through. As you can see over there, there and there's another one towards the inside. Now this fits on perfectly. So I have not obstructed it with the epoxy. However, in the damage, it did break some of these clips. So even though they are going in nicely, they're not clipping in nicely. I might have to glue this on as well. But just having a look at the fitting, yes, the fitting is fine. And yes, it can move nicely. There's no problem. So all I need to do now is build up that additional epoxy and let it dry for a bit. If you do this in the sun, it does dry quite a bit quicker. Uh, some epoxy wants you to mix it for more than 20 seconds. Right, so here is the finished product. It has been epoxied. I'm going to quickly do a strength test and then I will reassemble. Right, so if it had to take a front impact, 
and even if I take a hammer and knock it, you can see that it is strong now. And if I do a weight test, I'm pulling it down and I'm demonstrating that it wants to come out of the fitting rather than break here. There we go, that is quite strong. Right, now I'm going to do a weight test. Notice here is the side of the car, so I'm going to be pulling this down. You should see the car deflect. Right, so just re-inspecting it. It's still in good order. And now it's time to reassemble. Right, and there you can see the mirror is still working. Uh, it moves up and down as it's supposed to. Right, thanks for watching and cheers.